and welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. In this installment, we're going to look at Apache Camel. Apache Camel is an uh, enterprise integration framework from, uh, from Apache, of course, uh, uh, on which a lot of developers from uh, Red Hat work. Uh, it has been around for a long time. It's um, been around for at least as long as, for example, Spring Innovation. So uh, this technology has become uh, rather uh, entrenched. A lot of people are using it. And so uh, while I like Spring Innovation, I do want to uh, uh, explore the wonderful world of Apache Camel. And I want to particularly thank my friend Klaus Ibsen, uh, who, uh, who uh, spent some time with me to sort of introduce me all to all the latest and greatest stuff in, uh, in the uh, support for Camel for Spring Boot. Now, today we're going to uh, look at Spring Boot 1.5, which is uh, just a little old. That's actually, you know, we're now at 2.0x um, uh, for Spring Boot. But there is support for Spring Boot 2.0 uh, in the pipeline due in Apache Camel 2.2.2, which I think is awesome, right? Spring Boot 2. He's purposely giving it 2.2.2. That's super cool. So that's coming, uh, and uh, as I understand it, that's in the next month or so. Uh, but you know, open source timelines being what they are, don't hold, uh, don't hold me to that. There very well may good be maybe a good reason for that to change. But anyway, uh, sooner rather than later. And in the meantime, uh, we can certainly uh, use a snapshot version if you like. You can just add the uh, the uh, Maven repository that Apache has for for snapshots. Or uh, in this case, we can use the uh, Spring Boot one that. Uh, 1.5 series and just use Apache Camel uh, GA bits with it right now. So there has been support for Spring Boot, uh, very good support for Spring Boot uh, in uh, Apache Camel uh, since Camel 2.15. And this support uh, has gotten better and better and better uh, to the point where now I, I can't believe I haven't done a video on this stuff before. This is a, a really quite a, a whole embrace of the uh, Spring Boot ecosystem. Um, and so uh, we're going we're gonna to just walk through some of the basics here, and we'll look at some of the, um, uh, some of the things that you can do with, with Apache Camel, and then particularly how you can do them with, uh, with Spring and Spring Boot in particular. Uh, and then we're going to look at uh, what I think is arguably the most important part of Apache Camel, which, which is this amazing catalog of, of connectors. Right? Uh, in, integration framework is, uh, in some way, uh, very much about it's the uh, it's raft it's a stable of uh, of uh, connectivity uh, the things it, with which it can integrate and uh, here Apache Camel is no slouch and then of course finally we'll uh, look at the um, uh, we'll look at the world of uh, Apache Camel and how that works uh, with Spring in particular with with some of the Spring uh, into eco ecosystem that takes uh, message channels right including for example the likes of Spring integration Spring Cloud Stream Spring Cloud Dataflow and uh, the web ser web service uh, Oh, sorry, WebSocket support uh, in the uh, Spring MVC. So a lot of good stuff here to look at today. Uh, we're going to uh, focus on all these different components, right? We're going to we're not going to look at all these different components, but we're going to we're going to focus on different components today. There is a great list. I just want to make sure we're we've called that out. Um, Camel.apache.org for slash components uh, and uh, we'll start our journey as usual here at the initializer. So I'm going to go ahead and build a new application. But uh, again, keeping in mind, we've got 2.02 out there right now. I could use it. Uh, I could use this, but the, um, the initializer checkbox will disable itself because there is no 2.0 GA release candidate uh, version of Apache Camel. And it's coming, right? It's coming soon enough. So uh, and it, you can even get this code to work uh, with 2.0. But for our purposes, since it's almost identical, uh, the, uh, the code footprint, we're just going to use 1.5. Uh, and we're going to create an example here called Camel. And uh, we use Apache Camel. Now we also want to use. Uh, let's see. We want to use uh, ActiveMQ. So we use a JMS ActiveMQ instance. Uh, we'll use. Uh, what else do we want to use? Lumbuck. That can't hurt. Spring integration. Right. We want to use the Spring integration support. We'll come back to that uh, in just a bit. Um, and um, I think that ought to do. Now that'll give us uh, the ability to do some basic stuff. And again, we'll 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 look at uh, what opportunities lay. Um, our, you know what, lay, what opportunity lay out there for us to uh, to uh, further expand this example uh, as we get to that point. But for for now, I think this is a, a good start. So we'll go ahead and generate project, and we're going to open this up as usual in the IDE. So here we are: cd downloads uao camel zip. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just start with the uh, the simplest thing that you can possibly do, right? So um, let's see. Here we go. That's going to start up, and we're going to um, uh, open up the property file once the build loads here. So let's see. All right. 
So the application has loaded, uh, and now we can build an application uh, that, that takes advantage of Apache Camel. So a couple things to keep in mind here is that all we've done with the initializer uh, is load up the Camel Spring Boot starter, which gives us Apache Camel 2.2.1.1. .2 .2 .1, uh, .1. And um, this, this certainly works. This is certainly a working version of Apache Camel. But the, uh, the truth is that this is probably not the best way to use Apache Camel. You see, Apache Camel has a huge, like, amazing, I mean, blew me away, uh, stable of components. So the first thing I like to do is to change my build to use a uh, dependency management section so that I can import these, uh, these dependencies unqualified, right? So that in order for us to do that, we need to add a um, dependency, dependency management section here, like so. And we're gonna add a dependency management section that looks like, uh, uh, you know, anything else you've seen before, for example, with Spring Cloud. So org Apache Camel, oops, sorry, dependencies, got ahead of myself there, dependency. And uh, we want to add the Camel Spring hyphen boot hyphen dependencies uh, support, please be right. I hope that's right, that looks right. Okay, org Apache Camel, all right, org Apache Camel. And the version will be camel.version and camel.version we'll define up here camel.version and the camel.version that we're going to use uh, is 2.21.1 right so that's that and this is a bomb a build of materials uh, BOM import so we're going to make it a import scoped uh, palm type right there we are there's our our um, our dependencies there we are and and that's it that's the uh, that's, I, th I think that's it. So we, now we can, first of all, we can change this. We can drop this from the, uh, the, the build there. We don't need it, right? That'll come in automatically. And now we can bring in all the other stuff that we want to use, right? All the other interesting bits that we want to use. So let's today focus on a very simple example. Our first examples, uh, we'll, look at J, you know, we'll look at the file system and JMS. Now JMS is, um, the reason we're using JMS is because we have a, a nice auto configuration uh, for Spring Boot that allows me to configure an embedded in memory sort of ActiveMQ instance on the same node as my job application, which means that uh, for those of you playing along at home, you can just run this program. You don't have to install a JMS broker. Is this typical of what you would do uh, in a JMS? Of course not. You'd use a, a proper standalone message broker. And is this typical of what you would do with uh, Apache Camel? No. I mean, nobody. I don't think anybody's uh, all that impressed with uh, uh, JMS demos. But what I want you to understand is that this is a, a, a messaging system. It's some sort of middleware out there. And it's one of uh, more than 200 different offer offerings and options that you have in the Camel ecosystem. So if JMS isn't what you want, maybe there's Kafka, maybe there's RabbitMQ, maybe there's AS2, maybe there's, you know, whatever. There's a, just a, a proliferation of things out there that you should uh, be aware of. Okay, so let's let's add some uh, support that we want to use here. So we're going to add, uh, do I have the actuator first of all? I, th I think we want the actuator. So Spring Boot Starter Actuator. Spring Boot Starter. I should have added these back at the initializer, but I am... Um, I plum forgot. Uh, we want the uh, Spring Boot integration support. We'll come back to that towards the very end. All right. Do I already have that? Or do I already have that? Okay, good. So uh, there's that. And we've got the active, active MQ bits. We want now the JMS support for Apache Camel. If I'm not mistaken, kind of reviewing these here, we've got org Apache dot Camel. Uh, let's see, or poor Camel. Is that not right? Yeah, that is right. Uh, Memory's a little bad, but you know, I think we'll get there. This is the one drawback to not doing uh, manual builds that, uh, that often since I use a Spring Boot for most of my work. I don't remember how to do this very well. <laughs> so, camel, spring hyphen boot starter. All right, there we are. Look at that. So, there's this uh, spring boot starter. Um, uh, what we want is actually no, we want the camel JMS starter, right? There's a number of different starters. And that's actually another important bit to understand here. There are 200 odd components, where components in this case refers to uh, the cap camel nomenclature for integrations, basically, you know, things that, that the that camel can talk to. And you can use camel without spring. <gasps> I know, you're terrified just as much as I am. And in this odd, uh, hopefully increasingly rare context, um, uh, there are just a few more options. There are some more options that are available to you than there are for those of you using 
uh, camel with Spring Boot. But these are things that don't really make sense for a Spring Boot application anyway. Things like OSGI, right? Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna use uh, camel and Spring Boot and OSGI uh, together, right? That's a, uh, hopefully not as common a situation, right? Uh, so there are there's no support for that, and that's completely understandable. But all the interesting stuff, all the stuff you'd probably want to talk to, at least in my in my uh, humblest of uh, uh, of opinions, all the interesting stuff that I would certainly want to talk to, all that still works with Spring Boot. And actually, it goes a step further. You see, um, there is the Camel JMS support, and then there's a whole a whole um, auto generated uh, auto configuration for Spring Boot, right? And these uh, this auto configuration is aware of uh, of all the of all the metadata related to these different components. So let's look at some of these components, and then let's look at look at what that means for Spring Boot users. Here we have just some of the components, right? Look at all these different components: AMQP support, APM. You know, this is Apple notifications, Atmosphere WebSockets, Atom, Avro, uh, AWS, a number of different AWS bits there. Um, validation, the Box API, Brain Tree API, uh, Cache API. I mean, just so much uh, stuff here, right? Uh, CXF dataset, uh, direct uh, uh, DNS disruptor, uh, Dozer, EJB, uh, EH cache, Elasticsearch, etcd, uh, Spring Events, if you want to publish an event into an, an application context. Um, uh, what else do we got? Facebook, I mean, files, of course, Flatpak, I mean, Flink, uh, you know, for uh, uh, tasks, right? Dataset data processing, FTP and FTPS, Ganglia, Gauth, um, uh, for Google App Engine, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, G-Login, Google Calendar, Google Mail, uh, Gora, uh, uh, Geocoders. Oh my goodness, look at that, that's pretty cool. Um, Hazelcast, uh, HBase for Hadoop, that kind of stuff, uh, uh, that ecosystem. Uh, HDFS, HDFS2, HipChat, <laughs> HL7 for healthcare, right, the, uh, the healthcare world. Uh, Infinispan, that's the uh, Red Hat uh, database grid. HTTP, HTTP4, Ibatis, uh, Ignite, this is uh, Apache Ignite, it's another data grid. Uh, IMAP, IMAPS. Iron MQ, uh, Java Spaces. I'm not. This is a. This one makes me sad. I, I I'm a big Java Space fan. So, uh, J Clouds, uh, J Cash, JDBC, Jetty, J Groups, Jira, uh, JMS, JMX, JPA, Jolt, uh, JC, JSCH. That's a SCP protocol. The one you might use to securely copy things uh, on a shell from one uh, Unix uh, node to another. Uh, Kestrel, this is, I think that's the uh, Twitter um, highly scalable message queue from years ago. Uh, you've got uh, Kura, you've got uh, LDAP support, LinkedIn, Logs, Lucene, Lumberjack, Metrics, Apache Mina, that's the uh, email server, if memory serves. Um, uh, oh no, sorry, is that the, is that the, what is that? Um, this is... I think this is the. I'm thinking of something else. Mina is a. What is Mina? Network application framework. Okay, so I'm thinking of a an email server that's built on top of Mina that's out there that that Apache uh, produced, which uh, I recall being kind of good. Um, there's a you know MQTT support, uh, uh, MSV, uh, Mustache. Uh, uh, what else you got? I mean, my goodness, it just goes on. Nagios. I mean, Netty, Netty HTTP, OpenShift, uh, Paho, Eclipse Paho. That's MQTT support. Uh, PDF agent, you know, emissions, Postgres events, uh, email. There's Pop and Pop3, printers, uh, properties, Quartz jobs, RebMQ, um, uh, Restlet, uh, Rest Swagger, RMI, RNC, uh, Relax NG, Compact System, Routebox. Uh, RSS, Salesforce, SAP, Netweaver, uh, Schematron. Uh, I'm not sure what the. Uh, oh, this is a pattern inside of, inside of a, a Camel. So you can do. You can forward a call to another endpoint in uh, the same application, the same Camel application. Uh, SIP for voice, right? I mean, uh, SJMS, uh, ground up implementation of a JMS client. Uh, batch support, SMPP, uh, S secure, right? SNMP, uh, Solar, Apache Spark, Spark, Splunk, Spring Batch. Spring Innovation, Spring LDAP, Spring Redis, Spring Web Services, SQL support, Stored Procedure support, SSH, uh, um, what else do we have? My goodness, Twitter, Undertow, Vertex, Virtual Machines, WebSockets, XML Security, XMPP, Yammer, Zookeeper, oh my goodness. I mean, there's just so many things that you can use 
uh, and there's even uh, a number of them that are uh, out there, um, but they're not part of the actual distribution that comes with Apache Camel. And this list is uh, pretty impressive as well. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. So again, you would be uh, silly to ignore this wealth of integrations, and if only because it's kind of nice to have one recipe to be able to talk to all these things, right? I'm sure you could write the code, uh, and certainly there's integrations for all these things in the larger Spring ecosystem. Um, but there's not a great, uh, there's not a uniform interface for all these things. And so really, um, Ca Camel can be that. Look at this. This is a, a, a library for working with EDI parsing support using uh, something called Smooks, which I've never even heard of. But that's interesting, right? Lots of really interesting stuff out there. So the point is, all these components that I've just mentioned, uh, where did I put that list? Apache. It was called uh, this one. And we're going to call this components. There we are. Uh, this list has uh, you know, a lot of different components for us to use, uh, and we can see those components in our Git repository here. So github.com Apache Camel. All right. Now Camel has a large monolithic repository, and all the, all the different bits are inside the uh, components directory here. And you can see just some of them, Whew. right? all these things here. Uh, and that information. All those different uh, support, all those different options, those different things that are supported, get into, get turned into starters. So starter, and let's see. There you go. So you can see it says platforms, Spring Boot, component starter, um, and here are all the different uh, uh, auto generated. Again, this is auto generated based on metadata that are encoded into the different Camel components for a, for Apache Camel, right? This has been there for as long as Apache Camel has been around, uh, for, or at least for a long time, to support uh, metadata that tools need for auto completion. And we'll actually see that here. We have uh, in, this, in our, in our um, Spring Boot application, in IntelliJ, I'm running IntelliJ right now, there's a plugin uh, that's loaded that supports uh, Apache Camel parsing, uh, you know, route syntax um, editing, right, inside the ID. And so that metadata is derived from metadata encoded in these different uh, components that are available through Apache Camel. Well, there's a plugin that they use, a build plugin, that turns all of that metadata into an auto configuration plus configuration properties that you can use to configure these different components uh, in the way that you might anything else in the Spring Boot ecosystem. Uh, and when you add these dependencies to the class path, you get the default uh, uh, configured component that you want to use. You don't have to actually uh, add it or configure it yourself. Uh, and that's just really cool. I mean, that is really, really, really cool. So uh, let's Let's take a look at that. Uh, when we start building an application uh, using uh, Apache Camel, we create a routes builder. Uh, and so let's just say routes. I'm going to create a bean of type routes, return new routes builder. And I'm going to add routes to the ca Camel to context. Um, this is one way to do it, certainly, uh, is to do that. We can actually um, do that if we like. Uh, I want to override the um, configure method, though, not this one. So let's see. Uh, route, oh, routes builder, route builder. There's a bit of a subtlety there, and I'm going to hit configure. All right, so there's that. Now, when I'm in this API, once I'm, in, it's just a Spring Bean, right? We're returning a Spring Bean already. You can see this is you're very much in a Spring Boot world. Nothing is different about this. Once you're there, you can configure uh, very simple uh, routes, right? So Let's do that. We're going to say here uh, that we want to read from JMS uh, and then write that data to a file. This will just be the most, uh, the just or, or, or even better, let's just do a simple file to file. So I'm going to say from file, uh, and then I want to actually reference a property uh, from the property sources in Spring Boot. Well, Camel automatically bridges that world. And by the way, see that icon there? That's from the IntelliJ support for Camel. So if I click on this, I can I hit Control Space, and it's showing me that this is ex expecting a parameter. So what I'm doing is I'm using a component. Each component has a URN. Uh, some of which, some of those URNs are URIs, but uh, each component has a URN syntax, and uh, it starts with the, uh, as you can see here, it starts with the name of the component, and then you know this this uh, URI uh, URN syntax uh, tells you some of the supported options, uh, of which there are many. Right? You can see the things that are optional and things that need to be specified and so on, what they're named uh, for. So um, each component has its own URN. Um, and normally, if I wanted to configure my own URN, 
I would have to, uh, if I wanted to configure my own application, my own component, uh, then I would have to do that myself. So let's say I wanted to, before we get into this actually, before we get too far down that line, let's say I wanted to configure my own components, right? Let's say I wanted to configure my own JMS component, right? I would have to say private final camel context, and I can just inject this. This is the heart of the API in Apache Camel. I'm going to inject it into the application. Uh, and then there I'll say this dot camel context dot add component. And here I can say my JMS. And I can say JMS component dot JMS component. And often you see it's taking a, a connection factory. Well, we have uh, the embedded ActiveMQ support on the class path. So I can just say CF and that'll give me a auto configured uh, you know, Spring Boot auto configure the ActiveMQ embedded uh, uh, Ap Apache ActiveMQ instance there. Uh, and I can use that to configure my own custom thing. But again, if, since we're using the starter and not just stock standard uh, Spring Boot, uh, sorry, Apache Camel, we don't need to do that, right? That's actually been done for us in effect. And there's a default name. The default name in this case is JMS, right? So Active, uh, let's see, JMS. There you go. Uh, is there an ActiveMQ one? ActiveMQ, I think that's a uh, slightly, slightly different. We can use JMS is what, I'm, is what we're going to do. So that's, that's actually the component that we use is the JMS component back up there. So that's been configured for us. And we can see that here. We can see uh, JMS component auto configuration. Whoops, wrong one. JMS component auto configuration from org Apache camel component JMS Spring Boot. Uh, and you can see it's not... Um, it's not uh, too different from what you'd expect, right? There's just, let's see what the code here is. All right, look at that. Generated by the Camel package Maven plugin. So all of this is being generated automatically uh, based on the metadata. And there's validation that's happening here in the, uh, in the, in the initialization. Uh, and it's registering everything we need, right? It's, that's really pretty amazing. So uh, this is all there. Uh, and the result is we don't have to worry about that. And so we can reference these files. If I had, if I had left this code as is, if I had left this there, and I wanted to reference a message coming off of that JMS queue, right? Then I would say from my JMS, and the queue name would be my queue, right? So that would be the syntax. That would be an example syntax of a thing that produces messages, okay? So let's remove this, um, and we'll come back to it in a minute now. Okay, so from file, colon, and then some sort of file system reference. So here, I want to reference a property from the property source that uh, from a proper property source that Spring Boot knows about. So I'll say uh, curly bracket, curly bracket. That's the syntax for camel routes. Camel understands the syntax, uh, and but it has also bridged that syntax, that, that simple expression language. It's already bridged that uh, with uh, the property sources in Spring Boot. It knows about the properties in Spring Boot, whatever they are. So if they're coming from the, uh, the config server, if they're coming from dashed arguments, application properties, whatever, it knows about the property source uh, SPI in Spring Boot. So I can just say user.home. And that gives me the, you know, in my case, home day long, uh, whatever. So that'll that'll be the user at the home desktop, uh, and we're gonna say um, to JMS, all right, uh, or better yet, to another directory. So we're gonna do a very simple, very simple route, just a very simple route there, and I'm gonna say file user dot home. Uh, desktop well you know what make this in and this will be out all right so that's as simple as it gets really I, I don't think you can get much simpler than that and keep we don't need this for now well actually get rid of this okay so let's see what that looks like I'm gonna go go ahead and run this application and we'll we'll run into our first problem with this code as it's written as it's been written okay There we are. First problem. Uh, first of all, property with key. Oh, I forgot this. That wasn't the first problem I was anticipating, although it's nice that it was caught. Okay, there's our first problem. The application uh, is already shut down, right? So there's nothing keeping the main thread alive, or it's, I guess there's something keeping something alive, but it's not Apache Camel. Apache Camel, as far as it's concerned, doesn't get to stay alive. 
uh, and that's that's probably correct because it, we, you know we haven't done anything to explicitly prolong the thread. So in order for that to work, we have to set up a property here, right? This is the uh, a property that we can set thanks to Apache Camel, uh, and that property is uh, let's see, it's called Spring Boot Camel dot Spring Boot main run controller equals true, uh, true. Even. There we are. So there you go. You can see by the way. Do you see all those Camel properties? All of those come from the different properties that are supported uh, for these different components, right? Uh, some of which are on the class path already, but uh, uh, an infinite number of which are not on the class path. So that's amazing. We have all that support out of the box. Uh, now we can run this again. You can hopefully this time the JMS support won't shut down immediately. All right, looks like we're in, in business. So uh, ignore the active MQ stuff because obviously we're not using it just yet. Uh, but uh, let's talk about this. We've got now the application. We've got the in and out directories. If I go to uh, my desktop, I can do, I can delete in by the way. Let's delete in and start this again. There's in, right? So camel created it for me. So, okay, here we go. Echo uh, random. I'm going to use the random variable here. I'll say random dot txt echo high to random dot txt and now down here I'm going to watch the uh, previous the output directory so I'll say watch minus n one ls la all right so I'm going to every second I'm just going to watch this directory so if I do that again you can see it's pretty quickly picking up the new files which is awesome um, so that's cool we've got this uh, very very simple uh, camel uh, support there. Now we can do, there are options for the file component, right? This is the producer of the, of the data, this is the consumer. Uh, we have options for that component and if you want to specify them you can do that a couple of different ways. Let's look at the simplest ones that are in the URN or the URL syntax there, right? So uh, file, okay, and the options are typically found here, right? So um, do you want to auto create it? I can say auto create equals false, right? So auto create equals false. And look at that. If I hit control space, the IDE support gives me all these different options here. The done file name could be, for example, done, right? That's the file name that is going to be created to, uh, uh, to signal to some sort of consumer process that the file has been completely written to the destination, right? So the, the consumer would know not to ingest or read or process the, the file that's just been copied until it sees that done file, right? This is a very common pattern that you'll see in me messaging systems, right? Uh, you can say, uh, you can say that you want to provide a different file name. You can say, uh, you know, does it exist? And, you know, what options do you have? If it exists, you can append, fail, ignore, move, override, right? A lot of different options there. Um, yeah, so a lot of different, a lot of different useful options here. Move existing, keep last ride, force writes. I mean, all these different kinds of things. The bold ones are m frequently used or recommended ones. These are the ones that you should pay attention to. The other ones are less interesting, but they're they're useful, right? So all the support is there. I'm showing you the IntelliJ plugin, but if you're not using IntelliJ, that's just fine. All of that stuff is just it's being generated directly from this uh, same information, the same source that generates this table full of metadata is generating the Spring Boot starters and the configuration properties. Uh, uh, yeah, so a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff here. I, I'm you know truly impressed with that. Um, now, that's a pretty simple example. All right, let's try something just a wee bit more sophisticated. Okay, just a wee bit. So now let's look at uh, JMS. All right. Uh, by the way, our apps have route names. Before I get I move on too far, so let's say uh, we're going to give this a route ID. This is called a route. So it's going to be um, uh, in to out and that becomes useful because as you add more routes to a system you need to be able to identify which is doing what and where the errors are and so on so right now you can see when this application started up it says a total of one route one of which one are started uh, you know and it says route one well that's the generic name that we got uh, from that route but uh, we can give it an, a more human friendly name a human recognizable name there so right now we're gonna say uh, that we want to process files and then transform the file into a string and then we'll send that onto JMS, okay? So this is a slightly more involved example. So here I'm going to say file user.home desktop 
uh, to JMS. All right, and I'm going to say route ID is going to be. Um, and again, this is completely arbitrary. You don't have to specify the route ID, but I'm going to say file to route ID. Or sorry, file to JMS. And here, uh, I'm going to send it to JMS, and I'm going to send it to the queue. And the queue is the uh, well, it's the queue I want to send it to. The queue in this case uh, is arbitrary. I'm just going to call it files. It's just what I want, whatever I want to call it in the ActiveMQ broker. All right. Now this is, uh, I think, enough right here. This would actually get, you know, this would work, but we we couldn't really, uh, you know, what do we get? What do we get uh, that comes out of this component? The the pr produced thing that comes out of that doesn't necessarily belong inside of a JMS broker. So what I would actually want to do is I want to take the produced thing that comes out of this, a file of some sort, and adapt it. You know, I want to transform it into something that I can then send to the downstream uh, downstream JMS broker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say transform and when I transform it I want to specify which part to transform. In this case I want to transform the body. All right, So I'm going to say that the body that a body I'm expecting is of type generic file. So I'm going to use a, a type token here generic file dot class and I'm going to write, create a little lambda here. I'm going to use a nice functional API to turn that GF into something that uh, I can then send back or send downstream, right? So I'm going to say try uh, buffer reader. I'm going to, what I'm, you know, what I have here is I have a GF, and the GF has a dot file, and I can read the file like this. I can say file dot class dot uh, cast, and turn that in. So okay, and I can now um, I want to turn this into a GF. So let's see, what is GF? GF generic file. Yeah, seems okay. Yeah, okay. Well, why why are you not happy? Um, get file. File f equal uh, file actual file. Get file. Ah, right. Because I need to cast this. So file dot class dot cast. All right, well, Mr. Compiler, you're making things harder. Let's see. Maybe IntelliJ is having a bad moment. Let's try return null for now. Just to comp ah, there we are. So it was something related to some weirdness between the IntelliJ and, and the compiler. No problem. So we got that. Now we've got the actual file, uh, and uh, we want to take the file and we want to unpack the data in that file. So I'm going to create a file input stream, and then I'm going to wrap that in a um, uh, uh, an input stream reader, uh, and then I'm going to wrap that in a buffered reader. So I'm going to do a, a lot of different things that need to be uh, uh, resource. I need resource initialization and then destruction. So naturally, this is a great uh, use for the pattern, the the try with closable pattern in Java 7. So I'm going to say buffered reader in equals new buffered reader, new input stream reader, new file input stream, and I'm going to pass in the actual file. Uh, and of course, this creates a possible exception. So I'll add a catch clause, and we're, we're going to throw this code. We're going to throw this exception if we should see it, because there's nothing really that we can do here. We're just kind of in the middle of the flow, and if we can't handle it here, then it just can't be handled, right? So, all right. And here, uh, we're going to say that um, uh, we want to take the data. So I'm going to say return uh, the buffered in dot read line, or uh, better yet in dot lines, I'm going to take the lines, which is a Java 8 stream of lines, I'm going to collect them into a single string. Uh, collectors dot joining, and that'll, that'll, you know, turn it into one string for me. Okay, there we go. So I'm actually just taking the data that, that comes from the generic file, which is a camel wrapper around a file. It's a, a generic type that has information, meta information about the file, but it doesn't actually have to be a Java file. That's kind of interesting. It could be this a generic file thing. Uh, could be a wrapper around, for example, something from an FTP server or something else, right? So you, you're, you're, you're agnostic of the underlying um, source. Good. So there we go. Now, um, what do we want? We want to see that that file, that, that, that information, that whatever's, whatever's in that file, gets sent to this JMS queue. So finally, down here, let's set up uh, an example that just listens to that queue for incoming notifications. So f from JMS queue files, 
uh, and all I want to do is uh, process the data, right? So I'm going to create a new processor here. Uh, or better yet, let's just write it out to the file system. That's a good idea. We can do that. So just write it out to the file. We'll say file to user dot home desktop uh, from JMS. All right, so we're doing a really circumlocutus uh, <laughs> route that goes from uh, from a file system to JMS to Camel and then to the file system again. We're just taking them a long way around just to show that we can. Okay, that's uh, which is a little cute, but hey, uh, it's kind of interesting, right? All right, so and we want to call this route. We should give it a name because we believe in names. Uh, names should be uh, from so JMS to files. How's that? Good. Okay. Um, now let's try it. Let's go ahead and restart the application. Okay. What did I do wrong? Connection factory must be specified. Right. So that's this is a property that needs to be specified in the JMS configuration. Well, JMS configuration if you look at this, is actually a configuration properties, right? It can be, it's a thing that gets specified uh, by the configuration properties. So find usages, and you can see here uh, that JMS configuration, where's the JMS auto configuration? JMS component auto configuration. This is from Apache Camel, uh, and here, you can see that it's got the JMS component configuration, right? That's the thing that uh, we want to inject. That in turn is a you know it's been marked as a configuration properties POJO. So this is the thing that has all these different properties that we want to use. Uh, this has been auto generated based on the metadata inside of uh, the Apache Camel plugins. Uh, we've got that here, and we want to be able to specify those properties. Uh, and we could we could certainly try. I mean we could say Camel JMS the component JMS connection factory and then what well this is a property and it's expecting a pointer to a connection factory so that's not really a great fit for what we're trying to do is it we don't want to use a property file to do that so instead we're going to use a component customizer okay so we're going to inject we're going to tell it a, we're going to give it a reference to this configured connection factory just as we did before remember i said this dot camel context dot uh, add component my jms and I had to give it a pointer to the uh, uh, connection factory there, right? I'm not gonna, I, you know, I need to do something like that still, but I need to affect the existing Spring Boot auto configured uh, uh, JMS component for Apache Kafka as opposed to instantiating and managing all that myself. So, and by the way, most components will have a builder like that. That's, a, that's not auto generated, that's just part of the API. Now, uh, in this case, I need to do, use a component customizer. So I'm gonna say uh, static class. Um, Default JMS component customizer implements component customizer for the JMS component. This is an interface, a callback interface that when Camel's Spring Boot auto configuration perceives it, it will call and give a chance to uh, to override this particular uh, component, this, the instantiation of this particular component, and it's typed by uh, the type. So now we have the JMS component there. I'm going to say component dot set connection factory and I want to give it a pointer to uh, this connection factory the JMS connection factory that we got auto configured for us by Spring Boot itself all right so with that done let's try this again okay everything seems to be okay route you know we got the different routes started here total of three routes okay uh, and Let's go down to the open directory, and we're going to say to JMS. This is the directory that's going to, once I you know write data to this, we'll see it reflected hopefully here. Um, okay, so go. There's from JMS, and we can see that file eighty four one one. All right, so there's the the text file that we just created, um, and that's exactly what we wanted to see, right? That's a, that's actually gone through JMS. <laughs> the, the embedded message queue and it's gone through the JMS and it's been written out here which I think is pretty remarkable now 
we have, um, you know, we've been content to leave the name of the file up to, uh, it, it's, it's matching the input file, basically. That's been preserved in a header. So when the message, when the, uh, message arrives from this file system, there are some headers that are encoded uh, in that message that are perpetuated through JMS and that are visible to the consumer, to the thing that's taking the messages off of JMS and then writing it to the database. We can override some of that though. We can process this data. We can do all sorts of interesting things. So let's talk about some of that. Let's, let's say, suppose, let's say I want to, for example, change a header or set a header. Well, there are some well-known uh, headers that are expected for uh, the camel uh, file name uh, component, right? So here, uh, it's going to ask me to either provide a expression, like for example, I could use a uh, simple expression language expression here if I wanted to. Um, right, I could do body dot whatever. Lots of different things you could do there, uh, and that's an expression language that's unique to Apache Camel. But there are, is support for other kinds of expression languages. Is there spell? There might be spell. There's a lot of different ones, right? Um, that's one option. Or we could use a uh, a, a supplier, Java 8 supplier. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say, if you're asking me for a value, I'll just say uuid dot random dot to string dot uh, dot txt. All right. So there's my updated header. Now let's go ahead and rerun this code and see what that gets us. Okay. So you can see the syntax for the old number, the old approach to JMS. Here's this. Uh, let's write this down. Oops, actually I wanted to say at from JMS. Watch minus N L S L A. Alright. There we go. So you can see that the new file has a completely different name. So here's one way of affecting the pipeline, basically, as you can override well known headers. And those headers, of course, are also uh, well documented. So if you go down here, see all the different properties, and here are some of the headers that you can uh, you should expect to know about uh, for this different um, uh, for these for these different components, right? And this is all a lot of this is automatically generated based on the the component itself. So this is not subject to uh, to somebody being diligent. I mean, certainly there's a lot of diligence. I, I'm just saying this is not subject to somebody updating the documentation every single time there's a code change. This just gets done automatically, which is great, right? Now, ah, this is one way to change or uh, customize the, the the route here. We've got a very simple route. We're saying from this endpoint change the header, and then send it to this endpoint. That's great. Um, here, we're going to say, I want to take files from JMS, route it, transform it in some way, and then send it out. Now, I could do a lot more. You know, There's a lot of other patterns, a lot of integration patterns beyond just transformations and so on. You can do a claim check. You can change the body. You can delay it. You can try a dynamic router using an expression. Uh, you can do a enrichment. You can actually say, I want to you know, do aggregation and, and splitting. You can do an independent consumer. You could do a circuit breaker. You could do a, a load bouncing. You know, do tracing. Add that to it if you want. You could do all sorts of very interesting things uh, just by using some of these callback methods here, right? Um, and the result is that you get the integration flow that you want without giving up um, without giving up any flexibility here. Uh, so I, I encourage you to just peruse this uh, at your own le leisure. Of course, one of the most useful and uh, methods here. One of the most useful. Um, uh, transformations is consumer, uh, sorry, process, right? So process gives you a number of different things that you can do with the data that's passing through it. So I can I can use process.body or process uh, body and headers uh, or process body and give it a type, you know, an explicit type um, or process the exchange. And this is actually one of the more interesting ones or process the message. So exchange is the, it's the in and out, it's the thing that represents the bridge between, it's the door between two, you know, one component and the other, okay? So I can actually pr process this, exchange, and I can, you know, you don't have to do anything. Um, you could just say, ex return, exchange, a return, and then we can say exchange dot get in, right? The message, the exchange has the, the message that's coming in, and you can dereference that here, incoming, okay? And all I want to do now is print out that data. So I'll say in dot uh, get the body, I suppose. And we know that this is going to be a string dot class. String, so body will be this. And let's suppose I just wanted to print out 
what I see here. So I'll get log, uh, get class, whoa, dot info, uh, body is, voila. Okay, so I'm just gonna process the data, but otherwise it's just gonna pass right through this code and go straight on to the, uh, to the files component. All right, so try that again. All right, so now let's try this again. And we can see that the body says, hi, All right? So we're just, uh, we can insert ourselves in the process there. And there's a lot of different places where you can exercise control in that process. You can, uh, can, you can consume the exchange itself, the body if you want, uh, a typed body in this case. You can say the body is of type string and I wanna consume it as a string. That would actually be easier. So here, instead of doing all that unpacking as I did, I could say a uh, uh, string and then just log factory dot get log dot info uh, the string body is string. All right. So there's that other option. And of course, you need to start another stanza there. Okay, so we try that. Okay, and the string body is high. Okay, so there's a, a another one, and uh, finally there is the message, the message object. The exchange I think is the most powerful. You get access to everything there, uh, but you can use the message. The message is nice. You say message, uh, and I, I can get access now to this. I can get access to the body. I can get access to certain headers. I can add headers. I can add attachments. Um, you know, you can do interesting things. You can set up a, whether there's an error or not. Um, you can do all sorts of interesting things here. Um, but I would, you know, I would stick with either the body or the exchange. Sometimes you want you want to use a message. Uh, either way, you have full control, which is really cool. Okay, so we we um, we we like that. Now, let's suppose I want to do something conditional. This is sort of an uh, you know point to point kind of thing. There's no deviations in the route, save of course for some sort of exception handling. But uh, you can also uh, do a uh, choice. You can say, okay, when there is a a, a, a route that I want to match. So when uh, let's see, new predicate. When the exchange matches a certain condition, right? Then we can do some interesting things. So um, we can say, okay, when it matches this, go to JMS Q errors, right? So if math dot random greater than 0.5, so we'll log this out. Boolean uh, error and log factory get log error error and of course you would set fault here you do you know you'd have a some sort of fault handling logic here as well but you can say okay if you can inspect that exchange look at the headers look at the body determine where that should go based on some condition here i'm using it for error handling i'm saying send it to the errors endpoint and then end the choice and then otherwise you know send it to jmsq so um, uh, very very simple example. Let's see when error, and this is kind of, obviously this is a silly example, right? So let's uh, let's see that. Actually, you know what? We can do something a little more interesting. Let's try that. Let's say, um, hello, exchange dot get body get body string dot class. String hello, and we can say um, boolean hello equals hello is hello dot contains hello. Um, there we go. And so if it if it is hello, uh, then we say that we want to return it to the hello queue, otherwise we'll send it to the high queue, okay? Or the everything else queue. So there we go, so let's try that. So, um, hello, and let's see if I got this syntax right. I do get this stuff wrong sometimes still. Uh, otherwise, to uh, JMS, Let's just say files, all right? So JMS Q 
to files. Okay. I think that's about right. I think that's right. So write this again as a lambda and take extra care to take advantage of your ID support for indenting. Remember this uh, at formatter colon off trick that I used in Spring Security it, it, and it lends itself here as well. So tab, tab. Okay, good. So when it's this, I think we could just short, shortcut this a bit here. There we are. So when it's that, go to hello. Otherwise that, and then otherwise end. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that. Okay. Uh, and formatter off, or on rather. We wanna turn it back on so that everything else gets formatted correctly. So good, let's try that now. Uh, we have no way of seeing. I suppose we, we know that if it's if it gets sent to hello, there's nothing downstream to process it. So we'll 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 not see something arrive in the output directory. I guess it's a as good enough test as anything. Okay, so let's try that working. Let's see if that works. So hi, that gets delivered to the output directory as we expect it to. Let's let's just kill the um, files in here. And there we go. So there's nothing in that directory. Let's try again. There's that file. There's that one. That one. That one. Okay, so that that's working as we expect now. Hello. Nothing, right? So we're not seeing it being delivered. That's, that's because it's uh, you know the path is bifurcated. It's going. Uh, a different direction, which is what we expect. So you have flow control here. You, you have the ability to dynamically transform, to route, to do all the kind of things you want to do with messaging uh, in a messaging system. Now, of course, uh, you probably wouldn't have one route builder. You could have a, a number of different routes, for example, a different application. Uh, and it, uh, you know, all this time, I've been very clear to very, uh, you know, I've worked hard to um, to uh, to give these things route IDs. And the reason we would care about that is because. We want to be able to see what the application is doing. I want to be able to, to uh, manage those routes. Those routes have a life cycle, right? Those routes are, are interesting. Uh, and so we want to uh, observe them. And we, we can support that, of course, with the actuator. So let's set up a few things that we need for the actuator. We're going to say management security enabled equals false, just for now. You can set up spring security if you like, but in my case, we don't need it. So context path, management context path equals actuator. All right. Um, and I want to make the endpoints, the camel routes endpoints uh, not read only right so I want them to be I want to be able to post to them and to manipulate them so this is the actuator support here all right now when I run the application curl HTTP localhost 8080 forward slash actuator uh, forward slash routes is it Let's see what the actuator output is here. Yeah, actuator camel routes. So camel routes. Okay, so there's the output. We can see we have different routes. Let's say I want to stop one. I want to just stop processing um, into out. This is not necessary right now. So I can actually post to this one. Here, I'm going to send an empty HTTP post. So curl minus d uh, to the route endpoint, and when I look at this one, uh, you can see that in and out has been stopped. Right, so it was it was running before, and then I stopped it. That's a uh, you know that's very convenient. We can use the actuator, the Spring Boot actuator endpoints, um, to to introspect and manage the uh, the routes themselves, which I think is super convenient. Now, um, we have looked so far at uh, some of the niceties that Camel brings for the Spring developer. We've looked at uh, the nice DSL that it provides for building route definitions here. It is 
worth noting that there is, for those of you who want to use that, there's a uh, XML uh, uh, DSL based on Spring's XML support that you can use in Camel. Um, but I rather like this approach. By the way, I also inject the Camel context here. I injected it through the constructor because it's just a regular bean and you can do that. But there's also an interface called uh, Camel Context Aware, right? So you can actually tell Spring to and Camel to please inject a pointer to that Camel context. That's certainly one option. Um, and we've looked at um, you know ways to customize the default behavior and how that's working. We we looked at how the fact we looked at the fact that you can actually custom register different components. For example, ones that aren't uh, automatically generated as part of the um, the uh, Spring Boot starter you know plugin thing there that they have in the Apache Camel project. Uh, we looked at uh, some of the observability support that's in there in out of the box. Um, now I want to talk to you about uh, taking what we've got here and connecting it to Spring. And so we're going to use Spring integration because Spring integration uh, is just a simple. It's a nice API for integration as well. But uh, but in particular, uh, the message channel, which is what we're going to use here. We're going to use a component in our Apache Camel application that is specifically designed to forward messages into a Spring integration channel. So, for example, if I want, if I have a Spring Cloud Stream, and we did, in a, we did, we looked at Spring Cloud Stream in an earlier Spring Tips installment about a year ago, uh, and that in that installment we saw that a, a channel, a, a binding in Spring Cloud Stream, is just an interface definition whose uh, whose um, bindings are channel, uh, you know, basically message channel space uh, foo parenthesis parenthesis semicolon, right? It's just an interface method that has a channel definition, and that channel definition gets turned into an actual connected, hydrated connection to a uh, broker, be it RabbitMQ, Apache Kafka, uh, Google Cloud PubSub, you know, whatever it is, whatever binder you choose to use, uh, Spring Cloud Stream, Kafka Streams, we looked at that as well in a, few, in a recent Spring Tips. There's a lot of different bindings out there. And you can use whatever you want you want, uh, but the definition for the outbound uh, uh, connection to that broker uh, is just an interface in our Java code. Any configuration lives in the property files, right? So uh, the connection to the Kafka topic is done in terms of configuration in the property files, and that's related to the interface definition uh, in our Java code. So these things are um, very convenient, right? You can actually mix and mix and uh, mix these things uh, together. That's that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take advantage, for example, of the rich ecosystem of Kafka, uh, sorry, of a uh, Camel um, uh, components, and uh, we'll then forward it on to a channel, which will then we can then do all sorts of things with. That channel could just as easily be uh, a channel that's automatically created for us by Spring Cloud Stream. It could be a channel that uh, gets fed into Spring Cloud Dataflow. It could be a channel that's bound to be delivered, uh, who, you know, whose payload, whose contents are bound to be delivered uh, via Spring's, Spring MVC's, uh, especially in 4.0, Spring MVC's WebSocket support. So uh, all of this stuff, all these destinations are, are, are um, reasonable for uh, for 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 a Ca Apache Camel users, so you can actually mix and match. You can use Camel to talk to these things for which there may no may not be existing um, Spring support. For example, um, I don't know of a Spring integration adapter that does AS2. You can use Camel to to talk to that. You can use Camel to talk to whatever. I mean, there's a as we saw, there's a, a very rich catalog there, and then you can forward those messages onto a channel. So let's do that. Let's create a very simple Spring integration flow here. And say uh, integration flow, and I suppose I could use Spring Cloud Stream, but just to keep this as simple as possible, channel incoming turn. And I'm just going to create a direct channel now. Channels in Spring integration are named conduits through which messages flow, uh, and I want to send a message that arrives. Let's say that we send a message that arrives on the um, Let's create a route that takes the data that comes off of the JMS hello queue, and we'll send that into a Spring integration. All right, so let's do that. So here, we'll say from JMS queue hello to Spring integration, uh, and let's see what the component looks like for that. Spring integration. There we go. Yeah, it's just this, just like that. To so say, spring integration. The channel will be called incoming. There are some options. Do you want it to be in and out? Do you want it to be 
you know, what is the output channel? That's that. And is it synchronous? Uh, that's true or false, right? So that's the that's basically all we need to know. Actually, that's it. That's the whole thing. I don't have to do any properties for that. It just works because it's running inside of a Spring app, right? So when the messages arrive on hello hello queue, we had no outlet for them before. We would we would have expected to see them in the files endpoint uh, at some point, but we got rid of that code. Um, so now, if the message says hello, it's going to go to the hello JMS uh, um, destination in our broker, uh, and then our and then eventually it'll pop out of the uh, Spring Integration flow for this channel. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's write the Spring Integration processing code to, to process the messages coming out of there. And I'm only doing this because I, I want, we have to have the message. The message has to get processed. We can't just, uh, you know, buffer them and not do anything with them, but we don't really need, I'm using Spring Integration just because it's a simple example. You don't really need it in this case, right? We just want something to process that, um, that, uh, that incoming message. Let me see, inflow configuration. And uh, all right, so uh, uh, flow, and we're going to say return integration flows dot from this dot incoming, and all I want to do is just you know print what we see, so a new gener generic handler, and the data that we expect is what we're going to see a message uh, coming off of that queue. We don't know what kind though, so let's just go ahead and. Uh, announce that we have the message so log factory dot get log get class print that out here and we'll say log dot info new message dot two string all right so there's that not bad um, and uh, we can put a uh, breakpoint there build the flow and we're done so that's the integration flow basically we're saying when a message comes in from a channel uh, uh, just pass it to the handler. This is kind of like the processor in Camel, and um, and then uh, uh, you know stop the flow. Stop the flow. If we had returned a, a non-null value, then the flow would have continued. But in this case, we returned a a null value. Okay. What did I do wrong there? Oh, I forgot to register the um, Spring Integration Starter. So do I have that here? Nope. I forgot to re register Camel. Spring integration starter org spring I'm oh, sorry org Apache camel looks all right all right good so there's that uh, let's see what we have now. We are expecting to echo um, this output here. So hello, the new message is hello, right? So new message is hello. So there we go, my friends. Um, with almost no code at all, we have managed to uh, look at Apache Camel, which is a a rich framework with a lot of uh, integrations that uh, you, we might uh, might leverage. We should definitely feel to, uh, feel um, uh, feel free to use it. They certainly the the Spring um, so Spring Boot support for Apache Camel is uh, amazing, right? Really well done, re very well done um, um, uh, integration there. Lots and lots of different options. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they didn't do all that just so that we would ignore this wealth of options. There are, of course, a, uh, I'm sure a good number of Spring users using Apache Camel and um, Maybe they didn't know about all this great Spring Boot support there. So uh, this video was just a, meant to, to just allude, just to tease at some of the amazing opportunities here for those of us who love integration. My background, of course, is messaging and integration. I love uh, messaging, messaging and integration. I worked on Spring Integration quite a bit. I love Spring Integration. I love Camel. I love anything that makes, uh, uh, make it, makes it easy to connect otherwise disparate services and data. Now, um, uh, these are both lightweight integration frameworks. I love lightweight integration frameworks. These things hang off the side of your service uh, and they provide an opportunity to do all sorts of interesting things. Now, uh, there's actually preliminary support here uh, in Apache Camel for Spring Cloud too. They've got some stuff that they're brewing for uh, integration with, for example, the, uh, the uh, discovery client abstraction. There's a, there's a number, number of other things that are going on here. We didn't get to talk about data formats. We didn't get to talk about uh, all the different kinds of components, uh, all, rather, not the components, but all the different kinds of, um, uh, what are they called, APIs or SPIs rather in, in Apache Camel. We looked at uh, components and 
and so on, but there are other things that we could have looked at. So uh, we really only have only begun to scratch the surface. I, of course, encourage you to, to do so at your own leisure. And uh, with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.